23 years ago, I came up with this idea. It's in this briefcase, and it's going to blow the sharks away. Next in the tank, a Queensland inventor with a box of tricks he hopes will put an end to peak hour traffic blues. Hello, sharks. My name is Adam Riley. Today, I'm asking for $20,000 for 10% of my business. My business is light, compact, personal electric vehicles. In Australia alone, over $80 billion is spent on transport annually. 6.5 million people commute to work. Over 28% of all commutes are under, 20, under 10 kilometres and without passengers. Imagine owning a vehicle that is as small as this briefcase, so you can easily use it in conjunction with public transport. And when you get to your destination, you can easily put it into a locker or put it next to your desk. This is my personal electric vehicle. <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Oh, right, baby. <laughs> Mate, I want one. Right. <laughs> That's fantastic. That is amazing. Yeah. Well impressive. done. Very impressive. Very cool. It uses a 2.4G wireless hand control. Can travel at speeds at 35 kilometres an hour. It has regenerative braking, so not only stops easy, it also puts power back into the battery. It has forward and reverse modes. Sorry, can I have a go? Yes. <laughs> oh, come on. So we're all going to line up. How could you not? So how do you work it? It doesn't work in high heels, obviously. No, nah, bugger the heels. <laughs> so go forward, you just push this in. <laughs> and just turn, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Adam, how long have you had the, the board in a practical use? Uh, about two years I've had this design. It's been working for two years. I had five prototypes and this is the final prototype. Why do we not see electric skateboards all around the place? Or do we and I just don't know? They are getting very, very popular the last couple of years. Um, I built my first one 23 years ago. You built your first one 23 years yeah. ago. How old were you then? Uh, 15. Okay. How do your traditional electric skateboards differ from this electric skateboard? This is the first affordable electric skateboard. In the world? In the world as far as I'm aware. Did you paint it? Yes. And that's what the patent covers, the foldable aspect. Yes. And what do you anticipate to sell them for? $1,199. What do you make them for, mate? $500. Wow. How many have you made? Uh, 150 in the production at the moment. So you, have, so you haven't sold any? People have um, put orders in already. Pre-orders? But they're yeah. not sold yet. Tell me a bit about your background. By the way, we also need to hear what kind of vitamins you're on because you still only look about 16. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. Give us a bit of a feel for you as a person. I'm a qualified chef by trade. A chef? A chef. Wow. I used to own a restaurant as well. And I used to have 30 people working for me. So you've run a small business before? I have, yes. Oh, good. So you've asked us for $20,000. How are we going to use that? $20,000, we're actually to get it to the expos. There's, yeah, marketing. You, you basically want some airfares and share this thing off, right? Yes. 20 grand, it's not much. It's not going to get you very far, is it? If all of a sudden you got an order for 100,000 of these, what would you do? Um, bank plans. No surprise there. Well, actually, the plan is I, I've got 150 coming in and then sell them, and then, yeah, I can, with that money, I can buy another 500. With that money, I can buy another 1,000. The technical term for that's an excellent answer is cash flow. I'm going to fund this from cash flow, and that's an excellent answer. Adam, I think, um, I think you're amazing, and you're very understated in your approach. I'm getting the impression there's a lot more to you than meets the eye. I, I don't think $20,000 is enough. Um, I'm not sure how big this market is, but I, I do spend a lot of time in the States and I know the skateboard market there is just huge. And I, I would, I'd certainly like to help you get this into the United States. And obviously, by definition, if you get it into that market, you'll get it into a lot of other markets, including Australia. Yes. So 
I'm going to offer you $20,000 for 25% equity, but I'm going to offer you another $80,000 loan to be drawn down to quickly expand the business and buy stock. And that loan can be repaid as the business can afford it, say, over the first couple of years. So I'm in. OK. Are you from the other sharks? So, Adam, I'm going to be really straight up with you and not look for anything too complicated. So what I'm going to offer you is $20,000 for 15% of your business. I'll make you an offer. The offer is $20,000 for 10% which is what you've asked for. In addition to that, a $50,000 loan and a royalty which is $20 per board back to myself for the first 1,000 boards. Um, I'll put something forward to you. Yeah. I like having Andrew involved because of his American connections and I think that because he lives there that that connection is important. So I'd actually like to play with you and Andrew. I'd like another 25%. I'm happy to split the loan with him uh, and go 40-40. But that would mean collectively we would own half the business. So Adam's got to decide whether he thinks he needs to sell that extra 25% equity for that extra capital. Steve. He's got some great offers. He really has. I'm with you, Adam. I'm with you, Adam. Steve. Um, I, I, I like you. I think that you, you're, as Andrew said, you're exceptionally understated. I think there's a lot more to you that we haven't discovered yet, which is good. But. I'm going to make it easy for Adam. I think there's some great offers there that I'm probably not going to add a great deal to. I wish you all the best. I want to buy one. Yeah. I'd love to talk to you about some sort of customised, sort of cool version, to be honest. Yeah. So if you want some advice, just ask me, because I can just tell you what <laughs> I really think. But getting two sharks behind you would be fantastic. Having a dual presence, Australia and the US, is, is ideal. 50% yeah. is something you have to get comfortable with. I can't really give up 50% for that type of money. Would you be interested in doing 15% each? You're negotiating. I like that, Adam. No. Where are you with me and Naomi? Are we out of the picture? Because um, we've made offers too. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, yeah. I'd like to have two sharks. If Naomi wants to join in, I'm happy to do it with Naomi. I, I want you to have the best for you. So if you guys went together, what percentage would you use one? I said 15%. And you said 10, so that makes 25% combined. Plus the 50k loan? $50,000 loan and $20 royalty for the first 1,000 boards. So do you understand that offer there, mate? Yeah. Excellent. And we've got here with, with Janine and with Andrew, putting in $40,000 for 50%. And if you want to, I'll still go alone at 25%. Ooh. And, and, a lone, and a lone wolf, Andrew Banks. What would you be more comfortable with, going by yourself or going with Janine? See, generally, I'd rather go on my own, and if I was just thinking of me and getting a return, that's what I'd do. But I'm also thinking of you. I wouldn't object to Janine coming in because of her Australian infrastructure, yeah. uh, but that's a decision you've got to make. But you're the person that's giving up the most ground on that kind of deal. So it's just something you need to be clear about. Yeah. I'd be happy to work with you and Janine, but not on that percentage. I'd be more happy with, like, 15%. So you would prefer to do a 30% deal with the two of us and a 25% deal with just Andrew? Yes. Right. What do you think? I think we're both worth 40%. And on that basis, plus the loans, you've got access 
to $80,000 minimum. The loan okay. doesn't really bother me too much. If you don't want to do the loan, I'm happy with that. Well, we do want to do the loan. The reason I want to do the loan is I want the loan to power the value of my equity. You will hit that your I'm money back quicker if you do well, the loan, Well, I yes. think we're just going to accelerate your business and we yeah. can't hang around. We've got to get this product made. Yeah. If this is the number one Christmas present next year, this is all academic, Adam. Yeah. We're just planning whether we should be in a three-storey building or a five-storey building for head office. Nay, office looking better. What's going on here, John? <laughs> I think we're out of the cold. Oh, are we, if so, Adam, are, are we out? out? I'm still discussing, I'm still discussing. At the moment, you're, you're focusing all your attention up there, and I'm on the verge of stepping out because we're not getting any love at this end of the... <laughs> no love tank. at all. I think the American market... Do you have um, American contacts? Or well, you've got... I have no American contacts in the electrical skateboard area, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Having said that, if this is as good a product as you say it is, and we think it is, a phone call and a connection to people in this space is going to get attention. With your offer, you said you want $20 per board for the first thousand... Boards. Yes, that's correct. Would you consider not doing the $20 per board? No, I think there's enough risk involved, Adam, that needs a bit of de-risking. Adam, time is ticking by, it's time to make money. Would you two guys consider 35%? Your counter offer is 35% for $40,000 yes. for the two of us. Yes. Is that, are you, are you gonna accept that offer? Yes. Well done. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. What a negotiation. Thanks very much. And thanks so much for your offers, guys. <laughs> what a negotiation. Thanks very much. Right. Right. Take care. Well done. See you. See you, Adam. Well, that was intense. <laughs> that was intense. Andrew has got awesome connections. He's a shark I wanted. And Janine's an added bonus. So we're really excited. It's going to move the, the company forward so much quicker. 2,000 sales at $500 margin. That's a million dollars profit. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's going to be red hot. First up, a scientist who wants to sell the sharks on the food of the future. My name is Sky. I'm 31 years old and I'm from Sydney. I never used to have a Barbie doll when I was a little kid. I always used to be out in the garden collecting bugs and getting really dirty. <laughs> I've always wanted to be an entomologist, which is a bug scientist. This is my giant burrowing cockroach. Her name's Woodstock and she's about 10 years old. She likes to eat eucalyptus leaves and I take her out to do educational shows. Some of the bugs actually live for quite a long time, so they have really, really interesting personalities. She actually likes to blow kisses and she likes to be pet as well, just like a cat or a dog would. The challenge for me definitely has been trying to get Australian consumers over that initial ick factor when it comes to bugs. They're very nutritious. I think they'll either love it or they'll hate it, so I'm prepared either way. Hello Sharks, my name is Skye and my company is called Edible Bug Shop. I'm asking for a $170,000 investment for a 20% equity in our company. Yes, that's right, I'm about to sell you on all these fantastic edible bugs. So for the past seven years, we've been breeding edible insects specifically for human consumption. We've developed a patent pending uh, insect flower as well, which is high in protein. It's low in fat, it's got lots of good micronutrients in it, like calcium and iron as well. And I'm sure you're thinking right now, why should I invest in edible insects? Yeah. Well, <laughs> by the year 2050, the world's population will grow to over 9 billion people. And traditional forms of livestock that we have at the moment just won't be enough to support this population. Edible insects are definitely the future of food and we aim to stamp ourselves as number one in the world in edible insect production. Now, I welcome any questions that you have and if you would like to try some bugs today, I definitely welcome that as well. I'd love to try some. What would you like to try? <laughs> I would say the cookie. A cookie? <laughs> it's a good starter because it's not too um, bug-like, yes. <laughs> 
what, what am I about to try? What, what is this? So this is a chocolate chip cookie, but we replace some of the flour with the insect flour. So it makes it high in protein, it's high in calcium and iron as well. I'll pass today, but yeah. I'll think about it. I might come up and grab one later if I get hungry. Mm. Not bad. Can you give me some comparisons, please? If I've got cricket flour or, or insect flour, yep, yep. and the nutritional benefit of that compared to regular flour, what is the benefit? Yep, so the, um, the insect flour is 65% protein. Um, it's got double the amount of calcium as milk, three times the amount of iron as spinach does. So it's kind of a superfood. How do you know? Have you done clinical trials? We've done, yeah, we have all the, all the um, NADO accreditation. The, 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 the so. carbohydrate content of that uh, flour? There's about uh, 5.6 grams per 100 grams. Is that all, really? Yeah. So, and can you make bread from it? So what sort of flour is it? So it's just basically we dry the crickets and we grind them up into a fine powder. So it doesn't replace regular flour, it's more of a supplement item. For instance, with the normal cookie recipe, you'd replace about a third of the regular flour with the insect flour. So, so what, what is the cost to produce a kilo of Bug flour. Um, so it costs us about six dollars per kilo. Wow. Okay. Um, and then we would sell that at the moment for about eighty dollars a kilo. Excuse me, eighty. Yeah. Eight zero dollars per yep. kilo. Oh, nice. It's a good margin. How do you think you can overcome what's going to be a natural resistance that people don't like the thought of eating bugs? It's hard for people because you don't necessarily think of a cow when you're eating a steak. It doesn't look the same. I definitely see the insect flower as the way of the future with insect eating. So you're getting all the nutritional benefits of eating the bugs without having to look at them. Four out of five sharks have tried that. I actually think you've got 80% market acceptance in some respects. I mean, that's one way to look at this. When I ride my Vespa, I eat a bug or two, believe me, on a Saturday morning, but <gasps> I'm just not a bug-eating guy, and I think for that reason, I'm out. Well, I think you can't sell it unless you're willing to try it, so yeah. that's probably a right option. <laughs> that's why I'm out. You got any vital statistics with respect to your sales? And yeah, so our turnover for last year was 150,000. That was 60% profit, so 90,000. After all expenses are taken out of the business, you're keeping 90,000 bucks? Yeah. yeah, okay. Apart from the money, what are the other pieces that you think you're missing? I'm an entomologist and a food scientist. I've got a science brain. I kind of need someone to help me expand the business so that, you know, it's more appealing to a wider audience, not just scientists. And you want to work with this full time, 100%? Well, I work in my business full time at the moment. Is there anything in that process that is patentable, that is unique to you, that you can keep? Yeah, so we've got the, the bug flower is actually patent pending at the moment, so um, the patent will be pushed through on that soon. So competitors, who are your competitors in the Australian market? Um, or nobody. world market? Because people would be importing bug flower. No, um, you can't import edible insects into Australia because of our strict quarantine requirements. So there is no other competitor in this market but you? Yes. You tick a lot of the boxes for me in terms of what makes a fledgling business a big business, but where it leads me to is the valuation. Valuing the business at 850, I'm tempted, but I'm, I'm not tempted at your current valuation. I'm, uh, I think I'm, I'm at the point where I would make an investment, but I, I would want to bring your valuation down. I don't really think it's unrealistic to have a valuation like that considering, you know, the range of products that we have already established and the, the valuation of the pattern as well, which is the main thing. I mean, it is very tempting. But I do think the valuation on your business is the, is the challenge. Um, I'm out. So Sky, I do see competition for you. So whilst there might not be somebody in the direct space, anything that is a protein enhancer that's, that's not this is actually competition to you. At this point, it's not an investment for me, so I'm out. The big issue here is the fact that it, it's, it's niche. It's still, this is not gonna be accepted in every household in Australia. I think you need to take a good hard look at your valuation. I'll, uh, I'll get out now, thank you, I'm done. So where are we? Janine? Well, I will make you an offer.
I will give you the 170,000, but I want half. So 50%, 170,000. I do like that Janine has the expertise in the food area, which is obviously more beneficial to the business that we have at the moment. But I think 50% is a little bit much to give away, seen as all of the work that we've put into the business to start with. So would you consider 30%? I wouldn't know. Because the, the critical thing is you need people in the space, in retail, in food, and I truly think that where I've been in the last 14 years in this space, I do think that that is actually a very fair valuation for where it is and what we can also add. Yes, there's no question that you've put your blood, sweat and tears in this and this is your baby, and I, and I don't want to diminish that in any way, shape or form. And I do think that, you know, I do, th I do honestly also think it's a high risk for me because I think it might be just that tweak too early, even though your sales are saying it's, it's sort of coming. I love the protection. I think you're a very intelligent woman. And so I think we could work really well together. But I think for us to, to really drive it, I do think I need to be an equal partner. Congratulations. Just think about the other 50% being worth millions of dollars. Don't worry about the value. <laughs> That's well, what you've got to think be. about. It will be. It will be. Well Thank done. You. I was really considering whether giving 50% away was the right thing to do. And I think um, we've come away with a good partner. She has a quality that's very rare, I think, which is that she's very smart, she's done a great job, but she's still prepared to learn. She's she kind. will listen. Next in the tank, a fast food innovator, catering for customers who can't make up their minds. I think that there's a potential here to make millions, even hundreds of millions of dollars. Hi, Sharks. I'm Mark Murray, and I'm here today to make history by revealing to you and the rest of the world for the first time ever, the ham dog. <laughs> Wow. I'm offering a 25% share for all the rights and revenue associated with the ham dog. Though in return, I do want an investment of $1. Wow. The ham dog is a unique combination of a hamburger <laughs> and a hot dog in the one bun. It's so simple, the patty's split down the middle, sausage goes in the centre, load it up with your favourite ingredients, bang, there's a party in your mouth. So suit you, Steve, this one. <laughs> now, there is a very serious side to this product for any investor. Not only is it the most unique fast food product in the world, it is the only burger in the world that has earned the protection of a registered Australian design, and the only burger in the world that has been granted a United States patent and today being shown for the first time in the history of the world. My vision is to take the ham dog to market by either selling the rights and the patent or licensing it to a food or burger chain that finally wants like a draw card product that the competitors can't copy. Does that mean that you have no intention of building the business, all you want to do is get rid of the concept? That's exactly right, John. I want to get rid of the concept, either license this or just or handball it totally to a food or burger chain that is looking at it right now saying we need this because, again, there's nothing like it. I have to tell you, it smells good. Maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> it does actually look quite appetising. As you know, I'm in this space, yes, so tonight. I know this space very, very well. Clearly you've done a huge amount of market research to know that the consumer wants it. I believe there's a place for it, I mean... You know, but have you done the research? OK, I, around about 18 months or two years ago, I put a Facebook page up. The next day, I pulled the page down at 1,300, 1,400 likes. 
This is the sort of product that will self-market and go viral. Why because you pull the page down? Because I don't want the public to see this. But you've got a patent, so you're protected, and you're worried about the public seeing it. Well, I've always been worried, Steve, because even if someone did see this and go and copy it, I've got to cough up the money to fight them. In which case, if I invest, I've got to cough up the money to fight them, which is even better for you. How much money have you spent on this uh, culinary revolution? <laughs> Steve, I've, uh, I've tipped in probably about around the $5,000 mark. I can believe that. OK, yep. yeah. Um, so why a dollar then? This doesn't need money now. What it needs is I need help. If I picked up the phone and rang a big burger chain or something, they're just going to hang up and think I'm insane. But if I can get somebody that has contacts in that area and is respected in that way. Am I going to be going and knocking on Burger King's door and saying, hey... Yes, yes, you are. Wow. Because I've done my work. I'm not expecting you to put two or three years of, of time into this product. Look, who knows? that They could be lined up now watching this, so all you have to do tomorrow is answer the phone and say, yes, we can broker a deal. If not, it's going to cost you some, some time and it's going to cost you a dollar. You know, there's something, I, I've, I've got to say something here. I think my time is worth a lot more than to yeah. actually what's required to invest in this business. I think my reputation is worth more than what it actually has <laughs> to be associated with this business. So in that respect, I'm, I'm, I'm out, I'm done. I'm cooked, put a fork in me. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, but thanks, Steve. <laughs>6 weeks ago and she's with her friend and we're having this long argument cuz she wants a hamburger and a hot dog <laughs> I don't think this is a business proposition I think this is a punt and I'm interested in having a punt with you I'm prepared to give you $2 for 50%. <laughs> double. I wasn't expecting double. $2 for 50%, but I, I will work with you. I think it's a children's menu item. It might have enough novelty factor that we might get at least $4 back. No, I'm kidding. We might make some money out of it, but I'll offer you $2 for 50%. Uh, Andrew, I would love to work with you. Okay, well, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's make some money and make these guys <laughs> regret that they did yes. invest, you know. <laughs> Take it easy. Thanks, mate. All right, Appreciate see you. It. Cheers. And you guys, you know. We will laugh. When I'm the hand dog billionaire, they'll, they'll laugh the other side of it. <laughs> That's it. I'll join you on that one. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. You go. <laughs> Nailed it. I have to tell you, I got lucky here. You know who I was sitting? I'm sitting right opposite the fast food king of Australia yesterday at a function. I know him really well. He's got huge contacts in North America. It, I think it's going to be 20 phone calls and we'll either be dead in the water and I will have lost my $2. <laughs> but anyway, wish me luck. Andrew, your, your career has just hit new heights today. <laughs> you are now the I'm king the of the hand dog. dog man. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Leah, and we're from New Brisbane and we run a very specialised childcare service. We met through our children, Ollie and Ruby, who both have special needs. Raising a child with special needs has its challenges. You just kind of learn to just go each day and take it as it comes, really. Our business is unique because there's nothing else out there at the moment like it. 
Life's been challenging for us, but we hope that with the expansion of our business that it will only provide opportunities not only for us, but for all the other families out there. We hope the Sharks have the foresight to see what we're trying to do to help these children and for the industry in general. And we also hope they see it as a good investment. Hi, my name's Leah. And I'm Rebecca. And we're here to introduce you to our business, Hummingbirds Early Intervention and Education Service. We are seeking an investment of $80,000 for a 20% return. At Hummingbirds, we have a childcare um, facility that offers care for children of all abilities. It was through our own journey with our children that both have a disability that led us to this very special and unique line of work. Upon sort of researching the industry for suitable care for our children, we realised there actually wasn't one single childcare facility in Brisbane for children zero to five that have a disability. As Leah has explained, both of our children do have a disability um, and as a carer, you're not only required to be their parent, you are their nurse, their doctor, their therapist, their dietitian, but most importantly, you are their advocate. At Hummingbirds, we believe that children, no matter their abilities, should be entitled and have the opportunity to play with other children. The Hummingbirds' vision is to love, appreciate and savour. That is pretty much what the Hummingbird means. So we love um, every child, no matter their ability. We actually have a little slideshow here of some of our special little people that we care for. We work on children who have gross motor development delays, so they're gonna get the therapy side of support that they need, as well as the socializing. It's my little girl, Ruby, big smile on her. A lot of children have trouble with focusing on tasks, so there's certain activities that they can do, but in a different setting. So if it means sitting in a clamshell to just focus on an activity, then that's what we will do for them. Our aim for Hummingbirds is to expand from our current setting, which is a family daycare, where we have a capacity of four children per day under our care, to a more centralised setting in the inner north of Brisbane, where we will care for 21 children. That is Hummingbirds, Early Intervention and Education Service. Thank you, Leah and Rebecca. Tell us, how did you two meet? I actually met Rebecca through the journey with my own little boy, Ollie, which is just, he's at the top of the poster there. I originally enrolled Ollie into mainstream childcare, where he did not flourish at all. He has a little walking frame, they'll complain. So I ended up um, actually withdrawing him because they were about to put him in the nursery with little babies and he's three and a half. So this led me to do some extensive searching and I found Hummingbirds, which is in Redland Bay, which is about an hour drive out of Brisbane. And Rebecca was operating on her own as a family daycare. We obviously bonded through our children and um, just discussed from day dot the lack of facility that there was and we decided to join together and yeah, in the hope to expand that's our, yeah, that's our whole intention at the moment. I'd first like to talk a little bit about the most serious business, which is you as parents of two beautiful kids and many other Australians that have got disabilities. But, and you firsthand know the challenge that these parents are going through. I mean, could you just tell us a bit about looking after kids that have got these challenges? It's, it's um, very, very challenging, but again, it's very rewarding. You get through a day and you just see the smile and you just, like, obviously you don't want them going through pain. Ruby, until um, early last year, was on four hourly morphine and Valium in excruciating pain. She is um, considered palliative, but she is getting much better, much stronger each and every day. The belief and the vision I have for, for her, as well as all children that come to care, that you see that they are there, they're just locked in their little bodies, and it's a matter of just giving them a safe space that they feel that they can come out of their shell and just really start to shine. You have long days without any support, and unfortunately, Ollie falls into a bit of a grey area where he's not disabled enough for us to get funding, and so I've been a full-time at-home mother with him for three and a half years without any financial support. Um, g'day, uh, Rebecca and Lee. I'm, I'm Stephen. How are you doing? Hi. 
Whereabouts in Redland Bay? Redland Bay, um, Dart Street in Redland Bay. Okay, up at uh, Cleveland, that's all. Oh, okay. Up the road. Yeah. Mm. So, um, Rebecca, you're the major shareholder, sorry, or...? Um, no, we are joint... 50-50? Joint owned, yes. Can you walk us through the business model? This is a business pitch, and I don't want to seem callous and cold, but um, can you walk us through the business model of, of, of how you're actually doing the great work you're doing? Currently, um, the fees are $120 per day. Families do get the childcare benefit and rebate, so out-of-pocket families would be paying about $55 per day. Is it profitable? The turnover we've forecasted at Seven hundred and seventy-three thousand, and profit of that would be one hundred and seventy-seven. What is the ratio of children to carers? We're looking at having two carers at all times per room, so seven children per room, two carers. How did you arrive at twenty-three places? Twenty-one. 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 Sorry. We wanted to keep it as a boutique model, and that was the minimum amount of children or spaces for an actual centre. I asked the question simply because for a facility like that, you've got fixed costs. True, true. The next model up was, I think, around 40, 45, but a lot of the children get quite overwhelmed being in big groups of people, so yeah, that was our decision. But it's a good thing helping 21 families. It's even better when you help 45 families, I think, personally, right? True. And so our next aim would be then to open a second centre once we perfect that model with another 21 children. Would you not get a facility that's relatively easier to expand? You'll get more efficiency. You've got 24% of your expenses here are to do with your non-wage expenses effectively, right? Because this is a good business. This, this should happen. Is $80,000 enough to get it off the ground and going? Definitely. And you'll get cash flow to support Absolutely. it after Definitely. that? Definitely. Okay. Leah, Rebecca, you've got a waiting list of 35 people. They would spend $24,000 a year to for four days a week to have their kids with you, right? And they are probably, by definition, getting some kind of subsidy or government support. If you've got 21 of them to give you $5,000, you've got over $100,000. I mean, in a world of crowdfunding and in a world where there is demand and where you're providing a genuine service, why don't you get your customers to fund your business? I'm not quite sure how the childcare rebate and benefits would be applicable in I that situation. I don't know either, but have you asked... We have not asked that question. In fact, it's an interesting model to investigate. And often not... it's the case, unfortunately, that a lot of families are single-parent families. Through the stresses, um, myself, I, I'm the single parent of the, the two girls. I love what you're doing. I love what you're trying to do. If you're a not-for-profit looking for a donation, I'd probably consider it. Sure. I think your business model needs a fair bit of work and you do need some support. And I am absolutely convinced my instinct is screaming out at me that there's got to be a way of getting some upfront payment which is returned at the back end to actually take a huge drain off your cash flow. But I'm afraid at this point, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. I think what you need is someone to be right there by yourself to help take some of the business issues off your hands, get them running around filling in the applications, get them negotiating the lease so you can focus on what you're really great at. But I think you need somebody local to buddy with you and there might be people right in your business community. And it's only for that reason I, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Who'd you come here wanting? You came here with Tell Us Your Story, your, your research, the, the, the sharks. Really, we I... just... I think we want someone that just can see our vision, can see the need, um, and just believes in that, you know, together we can do this. Oh, I'm going to say it. I actually had a dream that you gave us an offer. <laughs> Childcare centres. I'm a tech investor. <sighs> Brisbane women Rebecca Glover and Leah James want an investment of $80,000 for a 15% stake in their special needs childcare centre, Hummingbirds. Steve Baxter is finding it hard to say no. Childcare centres. I'm a tech investor. 
I was a nutritionist. <laughs> If I'm going to make an offer here, right, it's going to be with, with some conditions, right, because I do not understand the industry. Sure. I think you really want to look at a customer in advance model. You want to fund these things going forward? I, I actually love Andrew's suggestion. There's got to be a way we can actually do a prepayment system on this. We have a business plan that allows us to have more than 21 at a future stage if need be. Sure. I'm not sure whether 80K is enough, but I don't think it's materially out of the ballpark. You're doing good. You've actually got a realistic valuation if you're forecasting that to be true. I'm going to make an offer here. This is too important, I think, not to, not to give a go at, OK? So I'd like to uh, go 80K for 25% for uh, as an offer, with those things I've mentioned as needing to be satisfied. OK, so is Janine and John still in? It's, um, it's a difficult one because, a bit like Andrew, it doesn't make sense for me as an investment. And then uh, emotionally, I go, oh, this is, you know, I think, I, um, you couldn't get a better partner in Steve. You know, he's, he's kind heart. He's bloody gruff sometimes, but yeah, you get used to that. Usually. And being based in Brisbane, because I know that the amount of work it's going to take for you to actually get to up there is going to be a lot. So having someone sort of close to you. So I am going to go out, um, but I cannot tell you how thrilled I am that you have actually an offer on the table for, for, from such a quality a quality partner. Thank you. What would this mean for you? Everything for us, for... Uh, I'm just feeling a bit <laughs> emotional. I can speak for myself and, and probably Rebecca that our children have led us to our vocation and, and our career. We feel absolutely unequivocally that we will make a very good, sound business out of this. We're driven with heart and passion, but we're smart women, we're very capable of this, but we have so many desperate, desperate mothers and fathers out there. It really is it. Yeah, I don't mean to get emotional because I'm, I've got my business hat on also, but <clears throat> we're just, just so passionate about it and to be given the opportunity to just take, it just expands to the next level and go, okay, well, we can really amp this up and we can offer more places, as you say. Um, I do have one of my closest friends runs a number of Sydney's Best childcare facility. <clears throat> a friend of mine runs some of Sydney's best childcare facilities. This is not an investment that should be fought in the shark tank. I think uh, that doesn't feel right or make sense. Um, I'm not going to fight Steve, but if you want a partner. Up to them, but I'm happy for John. So you've got an offer of $80,000 for 25% and they'll share it. Deal. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks you. Really, really excited. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> We're so blessed and honoured yeah. to be able to give not only our own children, but yeah, children in Brisbane and hopefully statewide at some point, mm. the opportunity to just develop as a typical ch child would and just give them, yeah, the opportunity to be in a beautiful facility. And yeah, we're just so honoured. We're just speechless. To, yeah, just speechless. <laughs> you have just no idea what those people go through. No, huh? every no day. I know. That mm. pressure and tension every day. And those girls, they're running a business as well as having to in their own life. Yeah. yeah. I, I see old parents in the supermarkets with disabled children that they're still yeah. looking after. I think they just, my like, God, what can you do? We're so, we're so lucky. But they're good women too. They need some coaching and mentoring, but they're great people. I love you too. Oh. Well done. Oh. Well done. Steve, we're in the childcare business. <laughs> hey, well done. Next to face the sharks, an inventor who wants to shine new light on an age-old medical problem.
Hi, my name is Jennifer Holland and I'm the sole owner and inventor of ThroatScope Illuminated Tongue Depressor Medical Device. I'm asking for $76,000 for 10% equity in my company. In December 2009, I took my baby to the doctors. He seemed to be suffering from a sore throat, so the doctor got out his wooden tongue depressor in one hand and his handheld torch in the other. He then asked me to restrain my child whilst he pried open his mouth with the wooden tongue depressor. This was quite distressing. I walked out that day wondering why. Why had this traditional method not been modernised? Introducing ThroatScope Illuminated Tongue Depressor Medical Device. ThroatScope is a one-hand operated device with a light source located inside the mouth for fast, accurate diagnosis. ThroatScope is a first of its kind for oral cavity examination worldwide. ThroatScope has been designed for GPs, hospitals and the general public. You simply take the disposable blade and slide it onto the reusable handle. This will automatically activate the light. You take one hand, hold your patient's head in place whilst completing your oral cavity examination. Once you have finished, a one flick action removes the blade and extinguishes the light. Thank you. Thank well you. Great done. job. Oh. You did a good job. So Jennifer, that was 76,000 for 10%, just to clarify. Correct, yes. Right, okay. And there's nothing in the marketplace like it. There is nothing currently on the market for in-home oral cavity examination. This is the first product. Wow. Jennifer, what's your background? Is it in the medical area? Uh, no, it's not in the medical area. I'm actually a financial accountant is my background. What does, it, what does it cost you to make? The full complete unit, one blade and the handle, $3.39. What are you going to sell them for, roughly? In the pharmacies, $29.95 and $9.95 to GPs and hospitals. How much does the disposable piece cost? About 24 cents. So tw it's a 24 cent bit that you pretty well you use once, you toss it in the bin. That's right. The shame of it is that compared to the cardboard one the doctors use, they're about, what, probably two cents? Two to four cents. Yeah, so yeah. it's ten times the price times the multiples. It starts to sort of add up for them. How do you solve that problem? That's only based on producing 10,000 units, that price. So I'm hoping once it, the, you know, manufacturing goes up, the price is going to come down. How long does the battery last for? The battery can last up to five years, so it's yeah, just a normal no, battery. Just like that. If I left it like that, how long would it, how long uh, would it last for? I think it would probably last a fair... If you left it on... Have you tried it? I haven't left it on. So it'll last... <laughs> I think it'll last a, a GP, probably one to two years, depending on how many times they use it. The idea is for future, actually, in my patent, I have it as a rechargeable docking station for the device. W what is it you're going to be using the uh, $76,000 for, Jennifer? I'm asking for the money for tooling and for to produce 5,000 units. This is a prototype. It's not a commercial product in the package ready to go. So that's my next step. Right. So you've asked for $76,000, which gives you a valuation of $760,000. Um, how much of your time are you spending in the business and how much do you intend to spend in the business? I get up in the morning, I turn my computer on, I work. I don't stop working. So we can count on you, you to be full can. time in this business? Definitely. I'm not going anywhere. Now, can I ask, is your patent shining light through perspex? That's the essence of your patent. It is it for the... Nothing to do with putting it in someone's throat. It's also the attachment and how it couples together to um, turn on and off the switch. I mean, Steve, you're more of an expert in that area, but I would have thought that's quite interesting. Uh, is there any medical device issues around this, um, Jennifer? It's a class one medical device, so the regulation is very easy. So it's a, a approval not required effectively, is that what they're saying? Pretty much. Listen, I think I know where I'm at. I like the fact that you've solved a problem, but in my case, I'm generally um, a little concerned about markets uh, like the medical profession where they're highly regulated. So it's not an area where I like to invest. Okay. But I applaud your uh, ingenuity and I'm sure you'll find some customers. I'm out. I just think it's fantastic, the innovation, but it re is really, really early stage. And um, it's a wonderful idea that we don't yet understand a commercial application for. So for that reason, I'm out. 
to say I admire what you've done enormously. To sort of have an idea and then take it from an idea and, and then have a, even a prototype with patents and, and trademarks. The thing that I think that might actually be a barrier for you though, is that it's 10 times the price of what they've, all, they've got currently. And it's an education for them to go, okay guys, get rid of that at two cents, put this in even if it's a 10 cents or 15 cents. It's just such a big step, barrier step, but please don't take that away as anything other than, than my admiration for what you've done. So congratulations getting it this far. I wish you all the very best, but I'm out. Did we poke into any uh, projected sales revenues or anything like that? I mean, do you have any clue about that? I do. Uh, I'm, my projections for year one, based on um, selling about 30,000 units and about um, a million blades, is about 400,000 after tax. You've got you to sell over 40,000 units gross profit just to get near your valuation mm. of your first year. So it's a big number. Mm. John, Steve? Your single mind and the, your drivenness to sort of participate in this business is fantastic. And I really, really like that. Full time tick. Your, your background for me isn't technical for how I'd like it, but it doesn't matter that much. This isn't a very technical device. So that's not really going against you. So I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think, though, I'm going to come back and just, just keep collecting my thoughts. Jennifer, it feels like you've sacrificed a lot to get to this point. I think that you not only know your numbers, which is your background, but you have looked at the market, you've looked at the product. I wish it was a little bit further progressed. It is slightly premature. But unfortunately, I'm out. Steve. Is it just me, is it? It is just you. Bugger. What, what do you expect, what do you expect from me, aside from any cash in this arrangement? I, I'm hoping for your connections. I know you have companies in the medical device space. Software. And I'm hoping that you can help me, and I know that you're a startup guy. And stand-up guy, I thought she said. <laughs> <laughs> You're a stand-up startup guy. I have an, a daughter who was diagnosed anaphylactic to peanuts and eggs, and um, she every time I go to the hospital, it takes two nurses to hold her down while a doctor pries her mouth open with a wooden tongue depressor. I stand there thinking, if, my, if they just had my device, eight times out of ten, my children will open their mouth for that device over a wooden tongue depressor. Can I, can I explore that for one second? I, I've, just, I've just got something. So kids prefer having the, like, the, this pretty thing. Nice, shiny object. In their mouth, and they do mouth. the paddle pop stick. On, on balance, there's far more acting against me making this investment than there is for it. Except the fact that kids will think this is a lightsaber. Um, uh, there are things that concern me, lots of things that concern me. This, this is amazingly over-engineered. I mean, it's nice, but honestly, you throw half this away and you can probably make it for a fifth of much, to be honest. So. I don't know of the regulatory implications of this, right, which, is, which can make this thing all of a sudden expensive, if not unsaleable in some markets. It is a class one medical device. In Australia. In Australia. Yeah. So I have a piece of software that we're trying to get regulated at the moment. It's regarded as a medical device as well. And, you know, so I know how crazy the rules are in respect to that. I'm standing here. I'm ready. I'm... I've been pushing this for four years. I've had four seizures in five years. Nothing is going to stop me. If that didn't, nothing will. I'd be willing to look at making an offer. Now, you have to know my background. I'm telecoms. Right. I know. All right. 
I'll do 76,000 bucks for 30% of the company. And then I'd look at a royalty with respect to that. So I would look at, let's say, a 5% royalty on the sale, up to the repayment of $76,000, up to the full repayment, after which the royalty would disappear. I would be left with the 30% equity. I think the royalty is counterproductive to the company to be taking funding out when we're going to need it most. Would you drop the royalty and I'll 30%? I'll be happy to do the deal, but drop the royalty for now. No. He's going to own 30% of the company, so he's not going to let it sit there and if it needs more cash, as long as you've got the business heading in the right direction. We're going to put this lightsaber in the hands of as many doctors, nurses, mums and dads as we possibly can. So that's what we want to do, right? So what's your answer? Just say yes. Yes. Good. Oh. All right. Thanks very Thank much. You. Thank you. Awesome. Well done. What a great presentation. Thank you. you did With good. my lightsaber. Well done. You're Thank extraordinary. You. Well done. Thank well done. you. Thank you so much. I knew before I came into the tank that Steve was the tech guy, and I'm just so excited to be working with him and moving forward with our business together. Oh. Well done. She's good. She is great. It's just got that tenacity. Well done. Nice work. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic. You are so awesome. <laughs>